And we are on episode 7 of TVNR. Jeez. Today, uh, I'm coming to you from a hotel room. We are in quarantine. We're doing a really, really cool project. Uh, and I hope in one of the upcoming episodes, we can sort of, you know, speak about what that experience has been like. So I'm here with, like, uh, my fellow cast members. The entire crew is uh, in the adjacent hotel as well. So it's been a really, really interesting uh, experience. So if you're wondering where I am, that's where I am. More importantly, uh, if it's your first time tuning into this channel you might want to check out some of the previous episodes uh most recently i had tabang mulea who is a celebrated director and i always say it's so easy to get information off of google but nothing beats human experience like if someone is able to firsthand be able to tell you their journey um and to share with you what it's taken for them to get to where they are it hopefully will help I'm not going to say shortcuts, but it will hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully help you in your journey and, you know, s sort of not make mistakes others have. Because I don't think it's necessary for somebody else to make the same mistakes that you have. I mean, if I've made the mistakes, surely you can learn from mine and not have to, you know, take the long scenic, you know, route. Uh, and that's what this uh, channel hopes to do. Today, I'm excited because I'm speaking to... Someone who I've seen grow in leaps and bounds. Someone who is testament to the fact that if you dream it, you can achieve it, as cliche as that sounds. Uh, if you're relentless in the pursuit of your dreams, Legend Mangaile is the kind of guy you sort of look to uh, for inspiration. Biggest, can I say producer? I'm still trying to figure out a title because he's also a publisher. Uh, but creator of some of the biggest reality shows in South Africa, uh, Dineo's Diary, which... Rest numbers, uh, being Bonang, which sort of changed the landscape of uh, reality TV. We have Living the Dream with Somizi, uh, Dinner at Somizi, Somizi and Mohale's wedding, uh, most recently Life with Kelly, The Bry Show with AKA. I could literally sit here and go on about it, but I won't do it. I'll let him do the talking. So without further ado, welcome to TVNR. This is TVNR. Because I don't have an actual title for him, please just welcome Legend Mangale. <laughs> welcome to the show. I don't know what to call you. I, I don't know whether to call you a producer or a director, but I think you've got that figured out. Yeah, I don't know as well. I don't go by a title. I, I love all disciplines, um, but I'm a businessman in the creative uh, industry, I would say, you know, because I think I've branched out um, from, you know, doing TV uh, into doing other things. Uh, like what? That has to do, uh, being creative, you know. So, but I mean, I mean, you know, obviously being a publisher, um, and obviously I guess what I've recently, what I've recently done is um, I've, you know, dabbled in in in. In the advertising industry, um, by way of consulting, and by way of of, of trying to grow within that industry, so uh, there's a couple of things that I've been doing there as well. Um, I think watching you grow has probably been the funnest thing to see. You've done some of the biggest. I think you changed. I mean, bar leader couldn't have been a better title. You literally set a whole new bar. You know, it's something that we needed as a country because for too long we were being fed just sort of. Take it or leave it. <laughs> you know, this is what you're getting and it's nothing else. But, you know, some of the biggest reality shows in this country were created by you. And I think you ought to be proud of yourself. Very, I know I'm proud of you. How do you feel about your achievements? Um, I, feel, I feel quite good. I have to say, like, you know, every day um, someone or something reminds me that uh, this wasn't a culture. This wasn't... Uh, something that was there, you know, um, and so I think though I have to give uh, you know props to to Dineo Ranaka for for, for 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 introducing me to this uh, to, to this to this world because I think I jumped on her her season two and three, yeah, and um, you know the rest is history. I saw the business as well, so she helped quite a lot in in shaping that journey for me in the beginning. Mm, uh, uh, there's a story I'll never forget. I don't know if you remember, but it was you, me, and Akumzi. 
and you guys came to my apartment in Randburg and we were going to start this production company and we had all these plans and to see you sort of, you know, bring it to fruition. Do you remember that day? I don't remember what show we were to make. Do you? What were we making? I, th- I think we were still sort of like trying to figure out what we would be making, but it was, it was coming together uh, in the hopes of creating a, a, a production house. And for my end, I definitely didn't want to go down the entertainment, the uh, celebrity route, because that's, that's something that I've, I've been in love with for, for, for a long time. I just think it needed depth, and I thought that the three of us could do, could do that because we understood what it meant to be in this position. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's beautiful yeah. to see how, you know, DC and I have gone into, you know, different directions and even places, hearts are kumzi and places, so may so rest in peace. Uh, I think he'd be ecstatic. He'd probably deserve a reality show. <laughs> exactly. Like he, before he passed, I think uh, the week before I had seen him, like, I mean, I hadn't seen him for about two years. And yeah. then the week before he passed, I saw him and he was, he was quite expressive about how proud he was of me. Uh, you know, just a bit, a bit of a backstory. When I came into Urban Brew, that was my first uh, sort of employment uh, that I got in the industry. And I remember my second day, uh, you know, meeting this guy and kneeling next to his desk and asking him to teach me uh, what he knows and how he does what he does. And to hear him say that the week before he passes, um, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, I'm. I'm in awe, um, you know, of what has happened since uh, I knelt I, I next to next to him, asking him for advice. You know, I think it's beautiful how you pay ode to the people that you believe, uh, you know, assisted you in 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 your come up, and you now have a CSI leg of of your own where you're trying to help young people uh, on the come up. Am I correct? What's this about? Yes. Tell us. So uh, I've, 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 I've grappled with uh, mentorship in a very big way um, because I think you would know uh, in this industry, I don't ever think you ever feel like you've made it, mm. but the constant uh, compliments and the constant request of, of sharing what you know um, has kind of been, um, you know, like this huge wave and I don't know what to do with it, right? So I've tried to have mentors and they've disappointed me in, in many ways. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I've tried to do with the team is that we formed something called the classroom. And the classroom is essentially um, a way to get people on set, a way to get people into the office uh, so that they could shadow, see, do with the rest of the team. So it's not something that is over the top uh, from a, how can I put it, like, like a very formal thing that I've done, but I've reached out to some people and mm. it, it's, it's essentially becoming, um, you know, something that I, I will one day call an institution of its own, you know? Okay, so that's the idea, to create an entire institution. Yeah, I think, I think there's, there's a very big um, need for us to always look back, to always pull back and, 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 and get from those who are trying to get in. It's, it's for me, I think the key in, in keeping this industry going. Like when you look around now, it's very difficult to find creators because creatives are creating for themselves on YouTube mm. and other spaces. So, you know, keep the economy of this industry alive. We need to be able to have succession plans, people that are on the come up that will eventually be the people who will look for people on the come up. So, you know, it's, it's, it's important that we have that uh, within our, our growth, within our our, our endeavors in the industry. I think it's important. And I think, um, yeah, like I'm trying, I don't know much about mentorship because, you know, those who claim to have been mentors have kind of not seen it through all the way. I mean, success I think it's hard. Is, I think it's hard. I think it's, it's hard to be a mentor or a mentee, you know, to sort of sustain that and to keep it up is a job on its own, but I, I think you know, you know, programs like yours are a step forward. And we live in a great world now because information is literally at the tip of your fingers. You know, you literally Google something, and there it pops up. But nothing is more more beautiful than knowledge. To a person, that can't you can't Google that shit. You can't yeah. Google experience. Yeah, you you can't people's lives <laughs> and what you know their feelings and their emotions what were some of your sort of 
I don't know, difficulties trying to do what you do. Also, when, to be honest, no one's done it. It's easy to do it when everyone's done it, but there's no one to, to say, hey, I want to do, I want to do that. Yeah, um, I think the difficulty was, was age for me because, you know, I, I started this when I was 26 and, um, you know, it's been difficult to convince structures like broadcasters, um, even people who are older than you, who, um, you know, you want on your team to help, mm -hmm. to grow, to necessarily guide. It's been quite a big challenge, but now I'm 31. Um, I'm Is it getting it easier? easier. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting easier. Getting, it's getting easier, but I think it's getting tougher to wake up in the morning. So it's a bit of a, <laughs> oh, please, you're 31, uh, calm down. <laughs> but I think that the type of work that we do has, has, has really convinced, you know, other bodies uh, within, with, with, within the industry to, to trust us, to, to be able to, to have us walk the journey with them in them trying to achieve what we've achieved. So it's been good. Um, I am trying to now figure out what is the next without necessarily not appreciating what I have, right? Mm -hmm. So time will come where, you know, there is no longer a need for, you know, this type of content. Time will come where mm -hmm. uh, there's no longer a need for, for celebrity reality shows. And I, I kind of feel now is the time to do that work um, as I did seven years ago, uh, you know, to, to begin a new journey, I guess, you know? Hmm. Do you feel like yeah. that time is getting nearer? You know, because there's a season for everything. You know, there's times where reality shows, like you say, celebrity reality shows are the talk of the town. Um, do you think yeah. we're moving in a direction where the, that is sort of changing? I, I would say that there is now a need for a hybrid. So if you look at how magazines are falling away, if you look at how uh, certain types of talk shows are falling away. Um, I think one needs to sort of look at it from, because you know how trends go, they, they come and they go, you mm -hmm. know. So with e-news falling away, you know, there's a lot of things that are happening in the industry and you're trying to figure out what is the in-between. I always use the example of, you know, everybody needs to create the middle version of what Forbes and GQ is because we both are interested in money, but we're also interested in lifestyle. So mm. what is the in-between of things that will have you uh, sort of create something original? So that's, that, that, that's my method methodology right now. So try to create the in-between of things. Like, so what is, what is it that we love about reality shows and what is it that is missing in the industry? Mm. How can you fuse the two, mm. you know? Uh, and, that's, and that's where I am currently. But I do think that you know, the time is, is nearing, you know, uh, yeah. for, 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 for this trend to necessarily evolve. Okay, but say before the trend evolves, I'm just, you know, a guy, and I feel like, I don't know, Kanya Mkangisa deserves a reality show, right? How do sure. I take it from just being an idea to seeing it on TV? So I think that's, that's the other thing. So for me, you know, I think people always think that, reality shows are because that celebrity is uh, interesting or that celebrity is a loud mouth mm. or that celebrity is, uh, you know, is getting all the big deals and, and, and mm. life is really interesting. It, it, that's 10% of what uh, I think reality shows should be about. Um, what I look for now is the people around them because yes, mm -hmm. I am Kangisa may be an interesting point, but who's around her? Mm. Who will carry the story for her as well? Because mm. you would know, um, and I take from drama, is that the main character isn't necessarily, um, you know, driving the story, but it's the people around them and how the main character reacts to yeah. their lived experience. So it's that for me, you know? I think, I think you start there and you, you look, okay, cool. Kanya looks like a, a, a great person to, to follow, but who's <laughs> around her? Who will carry her when she's falling? Who won't necessarily be there to continue her story when she can't? You know, so it's, yeah. it's, it's things like that that I look for. And then you walk it back to channel and then you do your convincing accordingly, you know? Yeah. How do you convince channel is what I'm asking, especially if, I mean, you obviously have work now that speaks for itself, but I imagine it wasn't so easy when you first came in. 
it still isn't, which is what I tell a lot of people is like, when you walk in an idea, it's still as foreign as it was for you uh, when you first walked in. Because I think what, what is brilliant about the channel that I, I, I provide for is that, you know, like the, the, the type of management that comes in and goes, it changes all the time. Yeah. So no one actually like knows legend, you know, they may know. So you're just trying to tell us you don't have the Mzansi you know, magic I like tender. I still have I don't. I really don't. I wish I had the Thursday slot <laughs> every season. I would put some, you know, so I don't yet. And I'm working on it. I definitely am working on it. But I think, yeah, it's still just as hard. But how I convince them is, you know, I put in a proper research pack, a proper pitch document that really tells you um, way more about the person than what we know. So it requires me to, to spend some time with people. It requires for the team to go research um, and make sure that there's a compelling document, mm -hmm. you know, um, that speaks to exactly what we will see mm -hmm. and how we will see it, you know? So I think it's very interesting for us to, to, to still be able to, to go back and work like that. Because I think if it was all easy, then, you know, we wouldn't have a Kelly Kumalo, let's say, you know? Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have a Living the Dream of Sunizi every mm -hmm. season. I mean, right now we're, is it convincing them about uh, Sumizi's, uh, you know, next season, what season five? Convincing? And it's difficult. You, sh you shouldn't be convincing. And it's difficult because it's like, how, what else? Yeah. But that's what they need. They need to know what they're putting their money into. Like, yeah. you know, you've seen Sumizi four times mm -hmm. in, 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 in this reality show, and it helps that, you know, uh, he keeps on growing. So his wedding, so, He's now a, a, like a husband, yeah. you know, so a lot of dynamics. His mom has passed away. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that, 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 that have fed season five in, in a way that for me is like, okay, not an opportunistic moment, but a blessing in the sense mm -hmm. that we get to see this man grow in front of us mm -hmm. and we get to see this man really evolve in real time. Uh, and so we can have a season five because it is interesting based on the many things that he's still yet to achieve. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people, I love all of the shows that you create. But we sometimes wonder how much of it is actually real and how much of it is scripted. And we know it's non-scripted, but it's structured. There's a structure to yeah. it. We know today, so Mizi is going to go, I don't know, do his nails. And then tomorrow we know he's got a meeting with, a, you know, a new deal or whatever. It's, it's structured, but you're obviously not telling him what to say. But there is a structure to it. So, 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 so there, there, there are promises in the season that we, we have to sort of commit to. So is there a wedding? So we know that we have to follow him planning the wedding. So mm. anything that has to do with the wedding, we have to schedule and say, okay, cool. Naturally that's going to happen. So let's go. Mm -hmm. But some of the problems that come up, like, you know, does he have enough money for this? What is Balisa going to think? What is Bahumi going to think? Those things, we try our best to bring to the forefront, but we do not feed in terms of, um, you know, authoring his story. He yeah. authors his own story. And, you know, all we do is choose the background in which it happens. Because sometimes you don't want it to always happen in the house, you know, you yeah. need to change scene. So actually go do your nails, something so frivolous as doing your nails. It deserves a conversation like, will mom make it to the wedding? You know, mm -hmm. so, so, so it's, it's just the positioning um, everyday life with an everyday type conversation and the backdrop could be whatever, you know? Have there been moments though in creating reality show? Cause the, the thing is with, unlike with the scripted, you sort of know what's going to happen with a non-scripted you don't. And I guess that's why you're so careful in selecting what kind of reality show and who you follow. But have there been moments where you're just like, Oh my gosh, this is not working. And then you like quickly come up with something. Be honest. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be honest, like, um, being Bunang was, 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 was kind of like one of those that, you know, I felt like the country needed to have. We didn't need to go all the way into seeing someone's life go down. And, you know, I wanted to keep it as, as fabulous as it was. And, you know, I think two years down the line, being Naomi became a thing on YouTube. And, you know, I felt like the country 
needed to see what we were trying to do with that show. That, that for me was, was something that I was trying to say, it's nationally, there are other types of formats when yeah. you do a reality show. Yeah. When, when you go behind a star, purely because they are a star, and purely and because they are in separation. Yeah, so, so I think the country was used to, um, you know, like, oh, we're going to fight there, or there's going to be like an argument mm. there. And that's, mm. and that's what people wanted. And I think, for me, you know, not necessarily a failure from where we stand, because it was one of the biggest business moves we've ever made yeah. to make a being Bonang. But I think from a audience point of view, we couldn't capture um, what we were intending to in the first season. Second season became better because we then started structuring to say, actually, let it be a bit more hearty. Let's involve more family. Let's involve more, I guess, um, of the everyday life. Yeah. And again, successful in its ways, but that wasn't the, um, the, the, the subject's uh, positioning uh, in, in, in life or in the work. You know, so Bonang was quite strict and, you know, I think there were many things that we achieved, but there were many things that we couldn't achieve uh, when it came to, uh, you know, the actual platform that we sat on. So, yeah. um, you know, both a win because, you know, you walk into Woolies today, there are uh, little champagne things that you mm. see born from the show. Uh, you see t-shirts, you see sayings, mm. you see, there's so, there's so many things that we achieved with that because that was essentially for me a brand exercise. Yeah. So but a win nonetheless. A win nonetheless. Wasn't ready for it. Yeah. I mean you, you look at shows Definitely a win. Like being mm. Bonang. No, go ahead. Sorry, go for it. No, I was saying like being Bonang for us is is definitely like like a win. But in terms of uh the broadcaster, I think we we, we, we couldn't necessarily get there. You know, and I, I I think if it had to come back we would necessarily still make it in the way that I think it should be made, you know? So there's a lot of, there's a lot of conversations that I'm still having about that property. Yeah. It's, it's definitely something that one should still do, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, you look yeah. at reality shows like we are Jola 99 and you see how people are literally just eating that up. You know, I think there's, there's a sense of, I don't know, it's, it's, it's either a reflection of our own lives or it's, you know, the demise of somebody else or drama, things that just look like out of the ordinary, but they could happen to you, but I don't want them to happen to me, but ooh, look, they're happening to somebody else. There's something about that that yeah. people sort of get attracted to. Um, do you think that is sort of the direction we are now moving into? Um, I, I, I could never move into that direction. I think we do need a balance. We do need the trash TV. We do need all that <laughs> stuff. But what I, I definitely don't think we need is, is, is just that, yeah. you know, trash TV is great, but I wonder how far that goes because essentially, you know, I, I, I don't even know how they're achieving that legally, to be very honest, because <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> It's like, yo, I don't know what kind of NDA people are signing. But I don't think they're it. signing I, any NDAs. I don't think anyone that, knows. That kind of speaks to <laughs> like how, how much people know about their rights and how much mm -hmm. people know about what they should and shouldn't uh, necessarily be signing off. You know, So mm -hmm. it's all these things that I think will one day not exist. But I guess because of where we are as a country and the lack of education, I think people can get away with it, you know? Yeah. Um, I genuinely feel like uh, our, our mandate has, to, has been to make feel good TV. Like people must feel good. People must feel very happy. Like, you know, even choosing Life with Kelly for us was, was kind of like that. Congratulations, it looks beautiful. It is beautiful, by the way. Thank you so much. Like what we set out to do was you know, even in the naming convention, like let's give life to this person. Let's let's make sure that people see this woman for what we've been able to to extract and, and, and experience. You know, mm -hmm. so the research um, was what you saw on TV. Like, you know, she is a loving soul. She is somebody who hasn't necessarily been given a voice, uh, and we want people to feel good um, at the end of the day, including her. You know, so I think what reality shows from us have done, um, they've given like that 
you know, like good mood, light mood, let's feel happy, let's feel inspired type thing. Yeah. Like I never want to be a reality show that like, like, you know, it basically destroys someone's life. Like that wouldn't necessarily be the direction I would go into. Maybe then if that's where the trend is going, that's where we sort of like sort of uh, sort of take a short left, okay. you know, and Fair do enough. other things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think what you have been able to do is make black TV look good. Like aesthetically just frigging good. You know, I feel yes. for the longest of time, it was as, almost as though black people don't deserve pretty looking television, you know, and, you know, you, you sort of exposed even, you know, the audience It's almost like, it's almost like broadcasters took the audience for granted where they weren't deserving of properly graded television. And, and, and what you guys have been able to do that is, is, is give us that again, set the bar to another level. I know you have to go. I have to go. Um, thank you for your time. This has been so enlightening. I hope people have learned a thing or two. Congratulations on everything publisher i mean i wish we could have gotten into that conversation uh mm-hmm. as well but yeah uh thank you for your time congratulations where are the dogs show us show everybody the dogs before we go Oreo. what is it cookie and cream thank you, thank you for this is cream okay <laughs> hi cream cookie it's oreo Oreo. Why wouldn't you want cookie and cream? Oreo and cream. <laughs> so, I mean, cream is very light. And then this one looked like an Oreo. I mean, so, they look exactly the like, same legend. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, legend. <laughs> what a time to be alive, hey? To be young, gifted and black. I, you know, when your biggest life problems is that you're too young for people to take you seriously because you're their boss, but you're too young. That's freaking levels. That's levels. If you liked this episode, remember to uh, press subscribe, remember to like, and most importantly, comment below with areas within entertainment, in television or in radio that you perhaps would like me to cover or people that, you know, you, you sort of look up to and wonder how on earth did they get there? I'd love to pick their brain on your behalf. Uh, so again, subscribe, like, and comment. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're tuning in via uh, Spotify and Apple Podcasts uh, as well, thank you very much. You are appreciated. Uh, until two weeks time, thank you for tuning in. Bye.